uh, talk to you about today is coming out of the book of Matthew. And we're going to start at the beginning of the seventh chapter. We're going to continue on as I started before the new year came in about the Sermon on the Mount. And we're in the last chapter now. I think I may have about one more message uh, before we uh, conclude this. But if you turn to uh, in, in the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter, and we're going to start at the first verse. And it reads as thus. Judge not. It's a, it's a, a comma after that. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with judgment ye judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Right. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shall thy see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Uh -huh. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Ask, and it shall be given you. Yeah. Seek, and it shall, and ye shall find. Mm -hmm. Knock, and it shall be opened unto Amen. you. For every one that asketh, receiveth. Yeah. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. Or oh, what man is there of you whom, if his own son asks bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. The Lord add a blessing to the word. Chapter 7, verse 1 starts out by saying, judge not. Well, uh -huh. Judge not. You know, I, 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 I thought about this and I, I, had a, I got a subtitle for this. And the subtitle is something that we used to say back in the day. Mm -hmm. You know, when somebody might have messed up or did something and you want to correct them, you would say, how are you going to act? How are you going to act? Uh -huh. That's how we say it. How are you going to act? That's it. That is how we <laughs> I figure it would, because you know you may have used it, and it may have been used on you. How you going to act? So that's what I want to talk about this this morning. How you going to act? Uh -huh. And see, I don't want you to tell your neighbor how you going to act. I want you to point your finger at yourself. Well, yeah. Say how you going to act? How you going to act? And, and, and remember that. Hold on to that. How you going to act? Jesus continues to preach to his disciples and followers in this portion of the Sermon on the Mount. He addresses their behavior and their attitude as he admonished them and how they should act. In chapter 1, verse 1, Jesus issues a warning. Judge not, and ye be not judged. Mm -hmm. ju judge men simply means to be judged. In many contexts, the root of it has a judicial sense. Well, it refers to the activity of th a third party who sets over two parties at odds with one another. Mm -hmm. The third party hears their cases against one another and decides who's right and what should be done about it. Now, I have a little knowledge about, about this. I, I retired from uh, the clerk, clerk's office of Colton County Superior Court. I worked there for 25 years. And in the clerk's office, one of the duties of the clerk was to maintain the records. Mm -hmm. And there are records of civil cases and also criminal cases. 
civil cases, the judgment will call the, the judgment or order, or in, in the uh, case of divorce cases, they will call final decrees. Mm -hmm. uh, most of our cases were uh, civil cases where lawsuits were filed against somebody were $5,000 or above. Now the criminal cases, the uh, judgment was called a disposition. And uh, you could have a disposition that comes from a, a jury trial, which a verdict would, would be issued. And basically, the order in the civil case and the dispositions in the criminal case basically tells us the conclusion of the case. In other words, in a civil case, it will even award something to someone or it might dismiss something. Uh, in, in, a, in a divorce case, uh, it would give you the, uh, the, the grounds and, and the, what, the settlement of the divorce. Who gets what and whatever. Child support and so forth. In criminal cases, if there's a conviction, the disposition is going to tell you how many, you know, well, how many years a person gets or what kind of punishment that person is going to get. So that's the, the judicial aspect of a judgment. Now, in the context of the scripture, <coughs> judge is used as a verb. It's a word of action and doing, and it denote, denotes a separate, select, or to choose. Hence, to determine, so to pronounce judgment. In other words, to form an opinion, to examine and investigate. Question all are informing and rendering judgment. But the mere natural mind cannot estimate the motives of the spiritual. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Discrimination, discernment are all elements of judgment. Now, Jesus is, 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 is uh, talking about those who judge who are not authorized. In other words, you're judging according to your opinion. We often do that, and, and see that—that's one thing that a lot of Christians are are are, are noted for is being judgmental. Yeah. yeah. We often. Amen. You, you can't judge a book by its cover. Uh huh. You know, you you look at a person and automatically you assume certain things about them without knowing anything about that person. Yeah. So we we Jesus is is talking about that type of judgment. Now, this does not mean, uh, and, and usually this, this type of judgment refers to an unfavorable or condemnatory judgment. Mm -hmm. See, as Christians, we feel that we have the right to condemn others when we don't. No. Be right. careful when you do things yeah. like that because right. all the things that you are condemning somebody by, God is condemning you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Good, sir. So you, you, you got to be careful about your, the, the condemnation, about your, your judgment. Yes. But this does not mean a Christian should never exercise judgment of any kind under any circumstance. Mm -hmm. The point being made here is that we are not to judge the inter motives of another. Mm -hmm. We are to render a verdict based upon, we're not supposed to uh, render a verdict based upon prejudice, information, nor uh, the, our own standards of judgment. Yes. Because if you do, the very same standards that you're judging somebody else, yeah. you will be judged by as well. Mm -hmm. That's what that means. Yes. Verse 2 refers to the ultimate judge judgment by which we shall be judged by God. Yes. Now, verses 3 and 5, Jesus addresses 3 through 5, uh, Jesus addresses Christian behavior by comparing a moat in your brother's eye and a beam in your eye. This is a metaphor for a small fault and a great fault. Mm -hmm. A moat is a small speck of sawdust, whereas a beam is a rafter for a building. See, the idea of the text is that one cannot remove the speck from a brother's eye until he removes the rafter from his own eye. In other words, finding fault in others until we can't find fault in others until we remove 
our own faults. All right. All right. All right. We find an example of this in John, the eighth chapter, verses one through eleven, and this is about an adulteress. Adulteress, an adulteress was brought before Jesus, and she had already been convicted. You see, she was convicted by the Mosaic law, and she was an adulteress. And, that's, and that was against the law and the punishment for that was stoning. Mm -hmm. So they already convicted this, this, this woman and they brought her before Jesus and they threw her before Jesus and uh, they did it to test Jesus. They often did things to test Jesus. Well, So they, 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 they said that She's an adulteress, and according to the law of Moses, that she must be stoned to death. So if Jesus says that, well, no, don't do that, he's going to be going against the, 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 the Mosaic law, and that, that was the law of the land. The Mosaic laws were the laws that were passed down from God to Moses. So how can he be the son of God if he's going to go against the law of Moses, that his so-called father, that they may say, had given to the people. So, Jesus is writing on the ground, and he says, He that is without sin among you, let him cast a stone first at her. Amen. And with that, I guess they thought about it and everyone left because in good conscience they couldn't do it. They could not, in good conscience, say that I have never sinned and picked up a rock to stone this woman. The only one who was authorized to do that was Jesus. But he forgave the woman of her sins. And he said, go and sin no more. So, with that being said, as Christians, as believers, we often forget about where we were before we had that encounter with Christ. Amen. All right. Yeah. Amen. You see, we're not born perfect into this world. Mm -hmm. We're all sinners mm -hmm. who have fallen short of the glory of God. Say it. Uh -huh. Say it. So with that being said, we need a Savior. Yes, we do. We need it. We still need it. We still need our Amen. Savior. Amen. So it never said what Jesus was writing in the in the in the dirt and sand and everything. I imagine it was like, how y'all going that? <laughs> All right. So that's yeah. one thing that we need to remember when we saw a passing judgment. How we gonna act? That's a, that's a personal question. How you gonna act? So when 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 I when I looked at verse six, I, I had some difficulty. I said, "What? What? What? What is he talking about? He's talking about dogs and, and swine. The dogs and swine were repulsive to the people in days, and." Um, he says that in verse 6 that give not which is holy unto dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. So I got better understanding of that when I read Matthew 10, 14. 
when Jesus sent out the 12 disciples and he says, whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet, off your feet. Uh -huh. So basically Jesus is saying that there are going to be some people that's not going to receive the word. Yeah, amen. They're going to deliberately not receive the word. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Y'all take that message up someplace else. That's how they're going to feel. That's probably how they're going to talk to you. So if that, if that happens, and, and, and I believe that he's talking about witnessing right now, when that happens, don't stand there and argue with the person. We went out to witness. We went out in pairs. And uh, in some cases, you know, people would, you know, they might look out the window and see us coming and everything. They also probably figured that we were Jehovah's Witnesses. And, uh, you know, what Jehovah's Witnesses do is in their name. They witness. It's nothing that you should be afraid of. So we went out and we witnessed. <coughs> You know, we asked if anybody needed any prayer. Sometimes people wouldn't even answer their doors. You hear TV and music going on all in, the, in the house and everything, you know. They didn't want to hear it. So we so we we can we moved on. We did what we were supposed to do. So I look at it like this. What Jesus is saying is that. When you go out, and he, he used the words uh, swines and dogs because it was repulsive. You know, um, one time I, I seen, I, I was uh, with, with a friend of mine, and he had a farm, and uh, I, I seen pigs slaughtered. And uh, that's, that's not a pretty sight, but he came outside, and he was feeding a couple hogs. And they were just eating everything. He came out here with a 22 rifle, and he about pointed it right between one of the hog's eyes. And you know what? That hog did not move. That hog continued to eat. You know, in other words, nothing was more important to that, that hog than his meal. And he shot the hog. The hog, you know, he he he, you know, went into uh, you know some convulsions and he dropped. But guess what? The other dog, uh, hog right beside him did not move. He continued to eat after the other hog was shot. He did not move. He continued to eat. So the same thing happened to him. And I'm saying this is for, for this point. There are those, and I see why Jesus used these terms, because of the characteristic of these animals. In other words, they didn't want anything else but their food. And that's one thing that with unbelievers, <laughs> they don't want anything else but their foolishness. Yeah, that's, good. that's the only thing they want. So you cannot give them. So that's why Jesus said, don't, don't give those things that are holy to the swines and the dogs. But there is one thing that you can do. And that's what Jesus is talking about in verses 7 through 11. There is one thing you can do, and that's pray for them. You can pray for anyone, anybody, who you have care for. You know, you, you, you're supposed to care for everyone, your, your brothers, your sisters. Amen, amen. Even those, the people that you don't even know. Mm -hmm. If they need something, pray for them. Well. Pray for them. You see, God rewards fervent and continual prayer. And when you make, when you make it on behalf of others, there are three important things that we should do. We should ask. We should seek. And we should knock. 
God promised that answers genuine prayer. Everything we need for spiritual success has been promised to us. Yes. God leaves us no excuses for failure. Jesus illustrates his point by comparing willingness of the human father to give his child a gift with our heavenly father who gladly give us what we need. In verse 11, the term evil here is used to refer to man's sinful nature. So even the sinful man are kind to their children or can be kind to their children. Therefore, how much more shall your heavenly father delight to answer your prayers? So we're looking at three things. Where I can ask, how are you going to act? For one thing, are you going to be judgmental? How are you going to act? Are you going to argue with people about their salvation? Or what you perceive as them not being Christian like? Without examining yourself? How are you going to act? And the third, are you praying every day for others? Well, how are you going to act? The last part is this is the biblical injunction often called the golden rule. Where it says that therefore all things whatsoever ye would that man should do to you, do ye even so to them. But this is the law and the prophets. So it's simply saying, do unto others yes. as you would have them do unto you. Yes. It's as simple as a golden rule. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Amen. Not the way you think that they should be treated. Treat them how you want to be treated. Now, when we look at the Ten Commandments, and this is something I found very interesting, maybe it's been preached to you before, but the first three commandments has to do with your relationship with God. All right. And they say that's a vertical relationship. It goes straight up and down. The rest of the commandments are concerned with your relationship with man or each other. And it's called a horizontal line. It well, goes like that. Mm -hmm. So tell me, when you put a horizontal line with a vertical line, what do you have? Cross. You have a cross. You have a cross. It's one thing to remember. I know the cross has been said that it's a symbol of death. But it's also a symbol of of our relationship with God and our relationship with one another. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. So, the first set of commandments which says love your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. The second table is summed up by Jesus saying that we should love our neighbors as ourselves. Okay? And I'm not about finished. I said I wasn't going to hold you long. Just a whole long enough uh, to, to pass these, uh, these pearls of wisdom on, on to you hey, that the, the Lord has imparted on me. So, what should we say then? As we say these four points, first, be careful when you judge someone because the measure you judge someone, you will be judged by. 
Amen. How can you make a judgment on someone's faults, as small as they are, when there are far greater faults in yourself? Think that you can save unbelievers is just given by just giving them the word. Only God can change hearts. All right. And mind. Only thing you can do is give them the word. And as it said in, 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 in the scripture where Jesus said, you know, uh, don't give uh, to, to the swines and the dogs, which he has related to unbelievers, because they're just going to trample on it. Mm -hmm. They're not going to receive it. They're going to trample on it just like if you, you, you throw the word in, in, a, in a hog pen. He's just going to, he's just going to walk on it. You'll sniff it, see if he can eat it. If he can't eat it, he's going to leave it alone. So that, that's, that's the second thing. Third thing, of course, is pray for. Pray for all who concern. And the fourth is the golden rule. Now, I'm going to test you right now. <laughs> so I want you to tell me what... I've been talking about all along. Okay? Here we go. Now that you've gotten all the facts, what do you say? How you gonna act? How you gonna act? There you go. <laughs> all right, thank you. I, I, I appreciate it. May the Lord bless you. I pray that you take this word, live by day by day. God bless you. Amen.